Good morning, everybody. Anthony Bjork from OTAN here. Uh, we're getting ready to start. Introduction to Moodle, part two. Um, welcome back. If you were here yesterday, if you were not here yesterday, welcome. Uh, glad to have you here. Um, let's get started. Um, just a reminder that um, OTAN is providing this training today. Hopefully all of you are actually aware of what OTAN is and does um, throughout the school year. Uh, we invite you to visit our website at OTAN.us. We have a lot of information for the adult education field on our website. And um, we hope that you will take advantage of what we have there uh, right now for your instruction. All right, so here is our agenda for today. Again, welcome back or welcome if you uh, are coming in, uh, joining us today for the first time. Um, we're gonna spend a little bit of time, not too much time, reviewing some of the important points from yesterday um, that we covered. Um, and hopefully, um, we talked about a lot of things yesterday, kind of a, um, an introduction to many of the basic features that you will encounter as teachers in your Moodle course, um, but um, some of it um, we didn't really get a chance to practice with yesterday, and hopefully by the end of today, you'll have a lot better sense of what those things are and how you use them in your Moodle course. So um, I just wanna review a few things that we touched on yesterday. Um, our plan for the day, we're, we're gonna do um, something ambitious today, um, and I'm, Hopefully it will work. I know that folks um, might be having internet trouble today for some reason in the last 24 hours, a number of internet issues have come up um, across the country. Um, we are not, uh, it's not just the Sacramento area, but hopefully what we're planning to do today will work out uh, just fine. Um, and really the intention today is to give you um, a lot of practice as teachers in courses um, so that um, when you strike out and um, start using the Moodle platform for your online instruction, you'll have a much better sense as to you know, how you go about uh, managing those courses. So that's our plan for today, for the bulk of today, to um, do a lot of practice. Um, and we're gonna focus today, we talked yesterday about resources and activities. Um, I'll remind us about what those are shortly, but that's our plan is to um, spend a lot of time actually working with those in your Moodle courses. Um, at uh, near the end of today, um, I hope that we have a little bit of time to talk about enrolling students, kind of what that process is, and also to talk about the gradebook. Um, and the reason why we want to hopefully get to the, a short discussion about the gradebook is that um, when I get to the point where we talk about, um, you know, what options you have in terms of courses that um, you have in your account, and there are many courses that OTIN has developed, um, that you can um, make, you know, we can give you copies of those courses and you can start teaching with them. But in, I think most of those courses, there actually is a great book that's already set up for you. Um, meaning when the students start doing the assignments and the activities in the course, um, grades will be generated. And so you, we wanna give you kind of just a sense of the grade book and what that is and what it looks like, um, how information gets there and, you know, what you can do about that. So. Um, again, enrollment and gradebook, um, we'll uh, try to save some time towards the end to talk about those, partic those two particular issues. And then um, a reminder at the very end, just about resources that you have available to you after today. So that's our plan for the next uh, an hour and 50 minutes or so. Okay, so um, again, let's do a little bit of review from yesterday. Um, and I have the annotation tool, so I'm gonna, use that, uh, if I remember how to do that. Oh, there you are. Okay, so um, here's the annotation. I'm gonna use the annotation tool. So first is where do we find the OTAN Moodle site, okay? So if we go to the OTAN website, otan.us, we have two ways to get there. So first is um, if you look at, uh, if you find the resources tab that's near the top of the page, you open up that drop down menu, and you can click on the link for California Adult Education Courses. So that's one way to get there. The other way is uh, near the bottom, we have this button. Um, it's kind of a bluish button. If you just click on the button, that will also get you to our Moodle site, California Adult Education Courses, okay? 
uh, on. Okay, so either one of those links will bring you to this page, California Adult Education Courses. You can also just type in the link direct, or sorry, type in the URL directly in the address bar, adultedcourses.org, and this will be the landing page um, where you're going to get started. Okay, we also talked about um, we also talked about yesterday how. Um, once you get to this page, you have two places where you can log in. There's a login block on the left-hand side, so just go ahead and type your username and password and log in. And then in the upper right-hand corner, there's also this place where if you just click on that blue link to log in, um, that will also get you to the login location. And again, um, when you come to the Moodle course or when you start working in the Moodle course, you basically have two options. So you can either request a blank course shell from OTAN. So if your plan is to basically build your course from scratch, this is what you want to request from OTAN, so a blank course shell. Or, um, like I mentioned, we have a number of, um, we call them developed courses, shared courses, and also EL Civics courses for those of you in ESL. Um, we have a number of courses under those categories. And um, when you, what you're looking at initially is a sample of the course. You can't actually do anything with the course. You can only view it as a sample. But again, if you like that course and you're really interested in using that course, in the upper right hand corner of each of those courses, there is a, a request, course request block. You would go at go Google Form and then that request will come into OTAN and then we will provide a copy of that course for you and we will also make you the teacher in that course so that you'll be able to uh, begin using it, make edits, make additions, take things out, reorganize it the way you would like. Um, so those are basically your two choices in terms of what um, what you're getting. And I mentioned yesterday, um, you know, when we do these trainings, a lot of people all of a sudden when they see the variety of courses that we have available for teachers, you know, all of a sudden they want like, you know, four courses, six courses, eight courses. So our request at the moment is just to um, select the one course that you feel comfortable starting with. You know, two if you're, um, if you feel that you know you can manage to, but really start with one, get a sense of how that course works, and then um, you know if you then want more courses down the road, then you can turn in those requests uh, later on. But just try to start with one initially, and you know kind of make sure you understand you know what's in the course, how it works, how you would use it with your students, um, and then request um, additional courses in the future. Okay, um, and then um, so. Unless we um, provide that course to you and make you a, a teacher and assign you the teacher role in that course, any other course that you would come into, your role is going to be student. So yesterday, the course that we practiced in, you, you were all students. So you didn't see the full functionality of um, what the course would look like if your role was teacher. And that's what we're going to show you today. Um, so, but just remember, initially when you come into an, uh, when you enroll in a course, your role is going to be student. So again, the exceptions are if we make a copy of it for you and assign you uh, uh, with the teacher role, or you ask OTAN to change your role in a course to teacher, and typically the example is um, you are, you and your colleagues back at your agency are actually going to go ahead and co-teach a, Mo a Moodle course. So in that case, you can just ask us to make yourself and any of our colleagues, um, teachers in the course, um, so that we'll, and then we'll go ahead and, and change your role, okay? And then finally, um, we also mentioned that when you go to the OTAN website, which is OTAN.us, you are able to create an account on the OTAN website and join the OTAN membership, but that account is separate from an account that you would create on the Moodle site, okay? So they're not linked. Um, in the future, they may be, and we'll let you know what if and when that happens, but at the moment they're two separate logins, okay? Um, and again, for all of your students, they also need to create accounts as well on the Moodle uh, Adult Ed Courses site so that they can enroll in your courses. 
Um, I didn't mention this yesterday, but I just want to bring this to folks' attention. Um, uh, just take a minute to talk about an orientation um, to the Moodle course. So um, it's important, it's really a kind of a best practice um, when we're working online to have orientation materials available for the students in the course. And what I mean by orientation materials are um, some information about how, you know, maybe um, an introduction to the content that's in the course, um, definitely some instructions about how to navigate around the course. Um, you know, one of the things I mentioned yesterday also was that um, when you come into a course and you kind of look at it initially, you'll see that there are a number of icons that identify what kind of um, items or pieces of content are included in your course. So you may want to include that information as part of the orientation material. So maybe you have kind of a table essentially, which would have the Moodle icons um, and then you know what each one of them correspond to. So if I'm looking at this icon, it means this is an assignment. If I look at a different icon, like the paper with a red check on it, that's a quiz. If I'm looking at, um, like I think the piece of paper with the globe in front of it, that is a link to another website. So that kind of information to include in the orientation would be really good for students to understand, you know, so when I click on this link, this is what is gonna happen, okay? And maybe some additional information about how do I navigate around the course? How do I submit an assignment? How do I take a quiz? Um, and things like that. Um, there was um, a good example yesterday was when um, a number of people were practicing in the discussion forum and they were confused about how exactly to, um, you know, reply to another person's post. Um, so some of that basic orientation would be really helpful to include in these kinds of materials. Um, if you happen to get a copy of a developed course or a shared course or an EL Civics course, most of these courses have orientation materials included and they're near the top of the um, near the top of the course so these would be good examples for you to look at if you're kind of if you're in the if you're kind of looking around at some of the shared courses right now just take a look and see what kinds of orientation materials each of those courses include and those are really good examples of what you might include in your own uh, Moodle course but they're very important that it's really Again, you know, students, a lot, I'm sure many of our students are coming into this kind of learning environment for the first time. So materials that are going to orient them to what they're looking at and how they operate in the online environment are really essential. So keep that in mind. Okay, so let's just talk uh, um, about a few of the things that we talked about yesterday and we're going to practice with these things uh, shortly. So we talked about the navigation block and the dashboard. Again, um, the navigation block is on the left-hand side um, of the Moodle course. Dashboard can be accessed from the navigation block. It can also be accessed from the upper um, left-hand, sorry, upper right-hand corner of your course after you log in. There's a little drop-down menu which includes the dashboard link, link to the profile, link to preferences. Um, so that's what those are. And then again, blocks, we can collapse them, we can expand them, we can dock them, which means we move the block entirely over to the left-hand side and collapsed um, if we wanna free up some space in our courses. And then a reminder about the breadcrumb trail um, that will help you quickly navigate within a course and then around the Moodle site. And I'm gonna go live shortly, but I just wanna kind of um, mention these things once again. Okay, Moodle interface, probably the, mo the thing that everybody remember, uh, forgets when they first come into the course is, okay, well, I'm ready to change things, but how do I do that? So you just have to remember to turn on um, the, or you have to uh, push the turn editing on button. So it's in the upper, um, oh, sorry, it's actually in the upper right-hand corner, not the left-hand corner, my mistake, I'll change that. Um, or you can look for the uh, command in the administration block, which is on the left-hand side. And then you can also change some of the look of your course um, by clicking on edit settings, which is also in the administration block. Okay. So to change the content of your course, you want to look for turn editing on. To change the look of your course, you want to edit the settings of your course. Again, those are both in the administration block, left-hand side. Um, we talked about switch role two. So, and I'll show you again where this is. It's on the left-hand side. 
it's a really great way for you as you're organizing your course to see the course from both the teacher perspective and the student perspective. So again, when you're the teacher in a course, you can switch your role to student and what that will do is that will basically change the view to a student view. So they won't see the teacher editing icons there. Um, they won't have the commands, the teacher commands that you have. Um, they have a much, um, a much different view of the course than you do. Okay. If you hide things in your course, for example, then when you, you can see what you have hidden and showing as a teacher, but when you switch it over to the student, they will only see the things that are showing. They won't see the hidden things at all, okay? And better yet, we suggest that you actually have two Moodle accounts, one teacher account, one student account. Um, and really then when you have the student account, you can actually do the things and have those things recorded um, as you, know, you basically can practice out the things that you're creating as a teacher. Okay. Um, when we turn on that editing, um, then all of a sudden we have this add an activity or resource um, uh, option that appears. And again, this will help us to access activities and also resources. Um, resources tend to be those things that um, you might find on a typical website. So for example, like links to um, other resources, um, maybe um, uh, you might include like files, like PDF files, Word documents, PowerPoints, things like that. Um, you can also, you know, think about a website that has different web pages. Um, so these are these are the typical resources that we're talking about. Activities really refers to the more interactive features of a Moodle course. So, for example, like if you create an assignment, if you create a discussion forum, if you create a quiz. Um, if you create a choice activity where students can um, basically provide some feedback. So all the more interactive features of the Moodle course are called activities rather than kind of the static things that are the resources, which are just kind of sitting there, you know, files to be downloaded or links to be click, clicked on, things like that. Okay, before we practice, um, let me go out to my course or sorry up to the Moodle platform for just a second um, okay so you should be seeing my screen which is the OTAN um, homepage OTAN.us so again to get to adult ed courses .org, we can either open up the resources tab and click on the link for adult ed courses here or we can scroll down a bit depending on your um, what kind of device you're using, and you want to look for this blue, this bluish button here, CA Adult Ed Online Courses. So we click on this. This should open up the California Adult Education Courses uh, website or adultedcourses.org. Again, the login block is here on the left-hand side, or you can also log in here on the upper right-hand corner. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. Uh, let me log into my teacher account first. So when I'm logged in as a teacher now, okay, so now I can see the navigation block. It's over here on the left-hand side, and here's that link to the dashboard. Or if I go up in the upper right-hand corner where I'm logged in, I can open up this drop-down. Here's the link to dashboard. I can change my profile. Um, I can send messages out here. I can also change my preferences. I can also log out from here as well. I'm going to go to one of my courses. So if I, in the navigation block on the left side, if I open up the My Courses uh, dropdown, uh, let me see here. Let me go to, actually, I didn't want this one, but let me think. Um, let me go to, actually, let me open up this one. I should be able to. Okay, so now I've come into this course called ITC, ITEC, okay? So I have the navigation block again on the, uh, the left-hand side. Now I have a administration block here also on the left-hand side. So here's where the turn editing um, on command is, and then here's also where edit settings is as well, okay? And then I can also turn editing on over here in the upper right, it's a button, 
So when I go ahead and click on that button, So now I have that add an activity or resource um, option that, that is visible now. So if I click on that, I get this uh, menu, right? So at the top are the activities. Again, the more interactive features of the course. Assignment, for example, choice is another one. The discussion form is here. If I keep scrolling down, I see quiz as well. And then towards the bottom are the resources. So if I wanna add a file, if I want to add a page, if I want to add a link to a website, these things are here. I'm going to cancel that. Okay. Um, let me just do a quick check. Blair, um, do we have any questions before we jump into the practice? I think we're doing great. Okay, good. Well, um, the questions are great. I hope the answers are okay. <laughs> and hopefully I'm not half bad this morning, so. Um, I'm just going back through my notes just to make sure. Oh, um, one more, just a couple of other things here. Again, when I'm looking at my course, upper left-hand corner up here, so under the name of the course, here's the breadcrumb trail that I was talking about. So this is where you're gonna find the breadcrumb trail. If I quickly wanna go back to the home page, I can just click on home. Okay, so we can use that breadcrumb trail to navigate around. Um, we talked about turning out egg on. Oh, the switch role. Let me go back to that course for a second. Um, the ITEC course. Okay, so I'm back in the ITEC course. Left-hand side, again, navigation block towards the top. If I scroll down a bit, um, I see the administration block. And then actually, oh, okay. At the bottom of the administration block, here's where that switch role to command is. So if I open it up, if I switch my role to a student, okay, so look, let's look at what I'm looking at at the moment. So right now I'm logged in as a teacher. I've turned the editing on. All of these editing icons and such have opened up. But if I switch my role to a student, I'm only gonna get the student view of the course, right? So I have the navigation block. I actually have a much smaller administration block as a student, okay? Um, in this case, I've, um, um, I'm allowing my students to look at their grades. So we'll talk, when we get to the discussion about the gradebook later, um, you have the option of making grades visible, for example, so that students can also see their grades too. But students have a much smaller administration block view than you do as a teacher, okay? I can switch my role back to my normal role or my teacher role, and now I'm back on the teacher page where I can turn editing on and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, activities, resources. Okay, I think we're good. If we don't have any questions, um, I'm going to go back to my slides. Anthony? Yes, Claire. Let me just, I'm going to clarify this real quickly so that sure. um, the question is, is there a place that shows us if we're logged in as a teacher? Do you want to take that? So, um, logged in as a teacher well okay when we're when i'm looking when i'm looking at this drop down okay first of all i know that i'm logged in because i can see my name and if i've added a picture i can also see my picture so for the moment i know that i'm a teacher or sorry 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 i know that i'm logged into moodle okay so um there is a way well okay <laughs> let let me go to clarify show participants. Is that what you're thinking? Is that what we want to show people or are you thinking about something else? Well, you're not seeing all the, the basis of the questions that we're getting. So if you don't mind, um, can I just go yes. real fast? Okay, go ahead. So, go ahead. so what happens is when you create an account in Moodle um, or any LMS for that matter, and you log into the LMS and you're not in a course yet, your role is just a generic role. It's not until you enter a course that your role is changed to, or you, you are assigned a role, teacher or student or non-editing teacher. So for instance, right now, Anthony is in, he's logged into an account. Uh, he's in Moodle, but he's not in a course. So if Anthony goes into a course, so let's say, pick a course that you have, Anthony. Any, As a teacher or a student or any course? Well, you're, you're just going to go into a course. So okay. when he clicks so on a back. course, if it's a course that he's a teacher, then he can edit, then he can 
change the course and he's in control of that course. But if he enrolls himself into a Moodle course, and there's an exception to this, of course, when he enrolls into a most Moodle courses throughout our LMS, he's going to be assigned the role of student. He will not be a teacher. He can't make changes. He can only participate as a student. When you were here yesterday, the course that you were in, you enrolled yourself and your role was set as student. Now, the exception to, and that's how it typically works. The exception in that is that Anthony created courses last or yesterday. You're going to enroll yourself in these special courses where he has set the default role that when you enter the courses today, you will automatically be assigned teacher because that helps us as part of the workshop. We don't have to go in and make promote all of you to teachers. So I, I hope that clarifies your role is defined by the course that you're entering. And if there are any other questions, then send them on. <laughs> yeah. And since, since you all know as teachers that when you are a teacher in a Moodle course, you are able to turn, on the, um, turn the editing on and edit the settings and such. Um, if you found yourself in a different course and you didn't see any of those commands and you saw that much smaller administration block, that only allowed you to do a couple of things, then more than, you know, most likely you are a student in that course. You are not a teacher in that course because you're not able to do anything in that course that a teacher would normally be able to do when they have that role. Okay, other questions, Blair, are we good? Um, I, I think that's pretty much good. I think the, the role, we're getting some other questions coming through. So yeah. when Anthony was talking about setting up two accounts, um, so for, for most of us, what we do is we set up one account that we use as our teacher account. And then we have another account that we can then, with a unique email address, that we designate as a student account. So I have a Blair teacher account and a Blair student account. All that does is it allows me, when I'm creating my course, I can enroll my student as a stu as Blair student, I enroll in that course. And then when I make changes, I can log out of my teacher Blair teacher account and then I enroll in, or I, log into the course as Blair student and function as a student in the course. The switch role is fabulous. It works about, I don't know, 90% of the time for, ever, for what you can see as a student. So having that separate teacher account, student account within your course allows you 100% verification of everything you're doing. Yeah, and I'll just say too, I mean, um, having two accounts is actually a good practice in all of the t all of these tech tools that you use and learn about. I typically have two accounts, right? Because if I'm, you know, we we um, a tool we talked about uh, recently was Padlet, you know, a while back. Well, Padlet actually, uh, maybe Padlet's not a good choice. Maybe something like Kahoot, for example, right? So if you use like Kahoot or Quizzes or Quizlet, any of those kinds of tools. Um, you should have two accounts, right? You should have a teacher account where you're creating the Kahoot quiz. Um, and then you have a student account where you can actually practice the Kahoot that you've set up. So it's a really good, just in general, like it's a really good practice as a teacher. Any of these technology tools that you're using, um, you really should consider having two separate accounts with two separate, right, two separate addresses, two separate um, login credentials sets. Yeah. It's just a good practice to keep you sane and make sure you really understand how the tool works both as the teacher and as the student. So, okay, um, why don't we um, get ready for our practice activity? Okay, so um, here's basically what's going to happen um, to start. So hopefully many things are gonna happen in the next 90 minutes, but here's what we're gonna start with. Okay, so here's the idea we have created um, nine different practice courses and they are organized by your last name all right so um and we'll show you in a second how they how those are organized so what's going to happen is you're going to find the appropriate practice course um, based on your last name when you enroll in this particular course again as blair just said 
we have set it up such that when you come into this course only, you will automatically become a teacher in the course. Again, this is not the normal practice. Normally you come in as a student, but we've changed a few of the settings for these courses to allow everyone who comes into these courses to be teachers automatically, okay? So, and then, so we're gonna give it a couple minutes for everybody to get into a course, okay? And then once we basically have a sense that everybody is in a course who wants to be in a course, then we'll go to the next activity. So here's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go back out to the, um, sorry, let me switch my thing here. We're gonna go back out to adult ed courses, okay? So everybody should be on the adult ed course, sorry, adult ed courses page, adultedcourses.org. You're gonna scroll all the way down. It's alphabetical. We're gonna scroll down to T for training. Okay. When you get to this training courses category, you wanna go ahead and click on training courses. Anthony, take a pause yes. real quick. Oh, sure. can you Sorry. go back go one back. page? Yes. For some of you, what you might see is view more. So if you don't see training, click oh, yes. view more and it'll open up the whole menu. I always have to do view more. Yeah. Too small of a monitor. Yeah, I think it might be because I'm currently logged in as well. If you're not logged in yet, you might have to view more. Okay. So either on the first page, you'll see training courses or um, view more to continue the alphabetical list, but you want to get to training courses. Okay. Once you're at the training courses, we call it a category. So training courses category, go ahead and click on that link. That will bring you to the courses within the training courses category. And near the top of the list, you should see our practice courses. Okay. So again, we have nine different courses. They're organized by your last name. So go ahead and enroll in the appropriate practice course based on your last name. And I'll leave that there for the next minute. Okay. And if you have any questions about that, please, um, Put a question in the chat if you if you're not sure still how to get here we can show that again but you want to go ahead and enroll in the course based on your last name and Blair let me know if I need to show anything again for folks okie dokie um, just in um, just a point here if you don't have an account on the adult ed courses site you still need to do that first. So that may be the reason why you're not able to get into the course. So you have to have an account that you can log into in order to enroll in one of these practice courses. And we'll give people maybe another 30 seconds or so to get into their appropriate course. And Blair, let me know if there are questions or anything. Um, I'm not sure how to get there. Okay. So let me go back to the beginning. And people are saying, I don't see my name. So, um, yeah, I think just covering that again. Okay. So again, we want to start at the California Adult Education Courses website, adultedcourses.org. Okay. And then, um, and if you don't know how to get here, just type it in the chat and we'll let you know how to get here. You can start at the otn.us website to get here as well. Um, you want to scroll all the way down. It's an alphabetical list. You're going to find the um, categories for the letter T. You may need to view more. You may need to go to page two in this uh, uh, for some of you, but you want to look for this training courses category. So get, click on the training courses category. This will provide the list of um, Moodle courses that are within the training courses category. And then we have uh, nine courses, nine practice courses here at the top of the list. Okay. They're organized by the letters of the, your last name. So just find the appropriate uh, practice course based on your last name and go ahead. If I click on, um, let me pick on one that I'm not enrolled in, this one, for example. Okay. Um, you'll come to, um, you'll come to this course and then you just go ahead and click this enroll me button and that should allow you into the course and you'll see actually I picked T to Z so you can see actually these four participants today who got all first of all congratulations you are in the correct course 
<laughs> but you also have all become teachers. So Elisa, Renee, um, Francis, and Mike, okay? So you should, um, we know that some of you anyway have gotten to the right place. I'm going through the courses and looking at the participant looks uh, uh, list. Great job. I think okay. every course has people in it. Nice. Okay, fantastic. Good. Okay. Whew. <laughs> Step number one. <laughs> okay. Blair, um, do we feel fairly confident that most people have gotten into the course or do we need any more instruction on how to get there? Um, I see people asking, they don't see their name and I'm not sure okay. what that means, but what you're going to do so. Okay, so uh, let me. Oh. Well, okay, like if your last name is hyphenated, go ahead and pick last name B R M. It really doesn't matter. These are just. Yeah. yeah, so just pick which course you want to go in. Even if you get into the wrong course, Anthony is not going to call you out, right? Yeah, that's fine. We, we, um, we, we were hoping that in all of these courses, there are about, um, there are no more than 10 of you in there. So I think just based on our list today and how the number of courses, I think we should be good. So if you find yourself accidentally in the wrong course, or maybe on purpose, maybe you're feeling rebellious today, I don't know. Um, we are on day whatever of the quarantine, but if, you know, if you've ended up in the wrong course, yeah, don't worry about it. It's fine. Okay. So again, um, all right, Blair, do we feel pretty good about that? Um, one other thing is if you're having trouble, uh, if Zoom is taking up, well, can you explain to them about how to minimize Zoom so that they can split and have Zoom on one half of the monitor and the browser on the other, please? Okay, so let's see if I can do that myself. Okay, so currently um, I am in Zoom and it might be, I wonder if the easier thing would be, Melinda, would it be easier if I just stopped sharing and then, no, I should do, okay, let me see if I can, let me see if this works. Um, because I'm not getting that green, uh, let's see, let me switch back to, actually, let me switch back to my PowerPoint for a second. Um, can you see, is something happening now? Yes, we can see what you're doing. Okay, so what I'm doing is I've grabbed my Zoom window and I'm basically resizing the window to be half the size. So it's gonna, it's gonna stay on the left-hand side in my case, okay? Then I'm gonna click on my browser window and I'm gonna resize that so it will fit into the other half. So hopefully you're seeing what Blair just talked about doing. Yes? Yes. Blair? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So what I have is this would be your Zoom window on the left-hand side. This would be your browser on the right-hand side. Well, that's how I've set it up, so mine's on the right-hand side. So all you're doing, again, is um, – am I in my browser? Okay. So again, I'm in my browser. I'm just basically resizing it. I'm just, I'm not minimizing it necessarily. I'm just resizing it. So I'm pulling it so that it's now gonna be half the size. So now I have both of these things side by side. I have my Zoom window on the left in my case. My browser is open on the right. So if you find that helpful, then please go ahead and do that. If you don't understand what we're doing, don't worry about it. But maybe for the purpose of what I want to do next, maybe we will. Um, maybe I'll just keep this like it is for the moment. Okay. So, um, okay. So if everybody's in a course, basically we're going to continue on. Okay. So now what we want to do is so let's review who is in the course, right? Because people were saying they're having trouble seeing if they're in the course or not. Okay. So if you are in a course, so I'm just going to pick A B as the example here. So actually, let me, I'm gonna, re, I'm gonna resize it <laughs> to regular size, sorry. Okay, so, um, okay, so I'm in AB. I'm, maybe um, I will enroll myself in here. Okay, so, you will, so now you're in your course, right? You're at the homepage of your course. So you have a couple of options in terms of seeing who's actually in this course, right? So if you go to the current course in the navigation block left-hand side and you open that up, so 
currently, the current course I'm in is Moodle Practice AB, but right under that, I have this link to the participants. So if I click on the link to the participants, uh, and there we go, a little slow. Okay, so now I can see the, th in this case, the three people who are actually in this course. Lillian is here, Deborah is here, and then the other Deborah is here as well, okay? So I know that those three folks are in this particular course, okay? So that's one way to see the participants in the course. Another way that we'll talk about later, I don't wanna talk about it right now, is in the administration block. If you click on users and you see the enrolled users, that's another way to also see who is in the course. And that kind of actually gives you a fuller view of who's in the course because that also includes the roles of people. So whether they are teachers in the course or students in the course, um, you get kind of a more complete picture of the participants by clicking on uh, users and then enrolled users, okay? But for the moment, I'm just gonna look at this participant list here, okay? So right now I see that there are three par uh, participants in this course, so Lillian, Deborah, and Deborah, okay? So are there questions about that so far? Okay, so if not, I'm gonna go back to my next instruction here, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna do in this course is we're gonna change the format of the course, right? So what I would like, um, when you're looking at that participant list, I would like the first person on the participant list to do this activity, okay? Um, so whoever the first person is, um, I'm gonna assign you to this next activity, okay? You're gonna do two things. Number one, you're going to change the format of the course from weekly to topics, okay? The second thing you're going to do is you're gonna change the number of topics to 15, okay? The way that you do both of these things is you have to go to edit settings in the administration block. So I'm gonna show you how to do this first and then once you understand how to do it, then you, the first person on the participant list is going to do this activity, okay? So let me switch back to my course. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna change to a different course to show you how to do this, okay? Um, so this is the practice that I'm gonna show you how to do. Okay, so let me turn the editing off. Oh, and this is not a good example, but same, same, It'll get you to the same place. Okay, so to change the format of your course, you wanna scroll down to the administration block, okay? And you wanna click on edit settings, okay? This is gonna open up the edit course settings page. Now, in the edit settings, actually you can do a number of things, right? You can actually change the name of your course, you can also change the short name of your course. The short name actually shows up in the breadcrumb trail. Um, so the full name will appear out on the adultedcourses.org site. The short name is what shows up on the breadcrumb trail here, okay? Um, your school will appear as the course category once you get it your own course. Um, for now, I believe you're just in uh, the training. You should see training as the course category. Visible is the difference, so you have two options for visible. Currently, all of the practice courses are showing, which means they are visible on the adult ed courses site. If they are hidden, then they are not visible on the adult ed courses site, and your students will not be able to enroll because the course is not showing. So a lot of folks forget this. They forget to change it from um, hide to show. So just remember, this is where you do it. You do it in the edit settings place, okay? Um, so let's scroll down to the two things that I've asked you to do. When you scroll down to this course format option, you have to open up this menu, okay? And here, there, here are the two, um, here are the two uh, things that you do, okay? You change the format of the course. You have a few different options. Currently, the format is a weekly format you wanna change it to the topics format, okay? And that way, what we're gonna do is currently when you're, look, when you're looking at the course right now, you see a series of weeks, right? April 9 to 15, April 16 to 22, 
April 23 to 29, April 30 to May, whatever, and so on and so on. So we want to change that from the weekly format to the topics format. Okay, step one, that's how you do that. Anthony, can I interject real quickly? Please. So we have a question um, about who's supposed to change the uh, format. Okay, so remember, it's the first person on the participants list. That's the person who's gonna be doing this in just a minute, okay? And we'll remind you to see, we, we'll remind you where you can find the participants list in just a second, okay? Okay, um, so format is here. And just a reminder, yesterday we talked about that um, uh, more information icon. So when you click on that, if you ever have any questions about what the different formats are, just click on that, um, that help icon with the question mark, okay? So format is here. Right below that is number of sections, okay? So when you open up this drop-down menu, it's between, well, zero, but between one and 52, okay? So what I asked you to do was to change the number of sections to 15. So you're gonna click on that number 15, okay? Make sure you scroll all the way down to save it, so go ahead and save. Okay, so I actually changed it to 15. Actually, let me turn that in and off. Or, yeah, off. Um, so in my case now, I have 15 topics. Okay, I think I only had maybe 10 before. Now I have 15 topics, okay? And also I've changed from the weekly format to the topic format, okay? So the first person listed on the participants list so in the navigation block, again, current course, we have the option to see participants. Go ahead and click on that participants. In this case, there's only one person in this course, just me, but you should have a list of the participants. So whoever is the first participant is the person who's gonna be doing that in each of the courses, okay? Questions, if you're, if you're good to go, then the first person go ahead and do those two things weekly format to topics format, and then expand it to 15 topics. And let us know if you have questions about that. Um, for the rest of you who are waiting, I'd give it about 30 seconds or so, and then you wanna refresh your screen, and then you should see the changes that your participant number one just made. Okay, but give it about 30 seconds or so, and let us know if you're having any trouble. And Blair, let me know. I'm seeing a lot of success. Oh my goodness, things are so happening. Marjorie, yeah, I was gonna say maybe Marjorie or Melinda check from the bottom up. I'm checking from the top down. Okay. And it looks good. Okay, good, good, good. Let me go back into AB. Perfect, fantastic. I see now topics rather than weeks. And now I see 15 topics, fantastic, success. Again, um, now we have four people. Oh, actually I wanna take myself out of this course, but anyway, that's okay. Okay, any questions on that so far? Topics and uh, the number of topics. Okay, if you're still having trouble, let us know and we'll come in and we'll swoop in and help you. Okay, so now the next um, activity, let me switch back to my PowerPoint for a second. Okay, so we changed the format, fantastic. Okay, now, everybody just uh, breathe deeply for a minute on this one, okay? So that you understand what we're gonna do. Okay, so we showed the participant list is, okay? And there should be a number of participants in each of the course, in each of the courses, okay? So first thing is, what I would like you to do is to find your, part, uh, find your position on the participants list. Meaning, are you first on the list? Are you second on the list? Are you third on the list? Are you fourth on the list? And so on, okay? So first thing is identify your position on the participants list, okay? Step number one. Step number two, once you figure out which position you are, okay? I want you to find the number of the topic that corresponds with your position, 
meaning if you are the first person on the list, you are assigned topic one. If you are the second person on the list, you are assigned topic two. If you are the third person on the list, you are assigned topic three. If you are the fourth person on the list, you are assigned topic four, and so on down the list. Okay? So again, find your position. Figure out which number topic corresponds with your position. Okay? Then, once you have that figured out, what you're going to do is you're going to change the topic and the number to your name. Okay? So, for example, in the AB class, AB course, I, I'm in position number two. Or sorry, I'm in the second position. So, that means that I've been assigned topic two. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change topic two to my name. So, topic two will then become Anthony. Okay? Remember, in order to do this, you have to turn editing on first. Okay? So, let me show you what I mean. All right? I'm going to go back out to... Um, a practice course. Uh, okay, well, I'm in the AB course right now, okay? So in this course, there are four participants. I am the second person on the list, right? Deborah Bird is first, Anthony is second, the other Deborah B is third, Lillian is fourth. Okay, so I'm the second position, that means I'm topic two, okay? Um, so if I go back out to the practice course, I'm looking at this list, I have to turn editing on first before I can do anything, okay? Now I have two options for changing this topic to, okay? You'll notice when I scroll over it that a little pencil should appear to the right, okay? If I click on it, I can just go ahead and edit it directly right here, okay? And that, that's the simple way to do it, okay? Otherwise, what I, another way that I, another um, option I have is to go over to the edit dropdown on the right hand side, open it up, edit the topic. Okay. Now, if I go this way, you just have to remember the default section name. In this case, is topic two. The default section actually corresponds with the format, right? We changed it to the topic format, so the default the default section name is going to be a topic and a number. Okay. I have to unclick it so that I can change this box, okay? And I can also just do it right here as well, okay? If I come here, I have to scroll down, just make sure I save my changes, and then I can change it to my name here, okay? So again, two options, scroll over, open the pencil icon, change it directly here, just make sure you have to enter when you finish it, or I can open up the dropdown, Open up edit topic. I just have to make sure I uncheck this box here. That will enable me to, um, to edit this box right here. Make sure to save that change. And now we're good. Okay. Now all of you are teachers, so you're all able to do what I just did. Just remember to turn the editing on. Okay. So I'm going to leave that now. We're going to take a couple minutes for everybody to go ahead and do that. Um, you may want to refresh your screen periodically once you've finished so you can see that your um, colleagues have also been entering their names in the topic spaces. Okay, Blair, questions? I'm just going to address something really quickly. So, yes, please. Um, people are commenting on the fact that the participant list keeps changing. This is an exceptional situation. You're not ever going to ha probably have five or six. We, we have you in one course, all as teachers, and Anthony was just using the uh, participant list oh. for you to pick one, designate one person to go in and format change, do format changes. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about what we did, just understand that you have the participant list, you can see all your participants, you can message them there, um, and it's okay that the list keeps changing. It's going to be because people are coming in late. Maybe their sorting order is by first name or somebody clicked last name or somebody clicked email address. All of those things will impact how the list is presenting. Yeah. I think, Blair, in this case, what's happening is because I made the most recent edits, so now I've jumped to the top of the list. So I think it's based on as the, edit, as the edits are coming in. 
I think that's and what's that's happening. an yeah, absolutely. So you've got uh, seven different variables of why that list is changing. Sure, 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 sure. sure. <laughs> yeah, so it's I think it's kind of wild out there. <laughs> okay. So long as you can find a space where you can put your name, that's all we really care about. So hopefully, you know, if it corresponds with a the corresponding topic and it's all good, then it's all good. Okay. okay, so yeah, now I'm seeing and I hadn't realized because I've been answering questions. So if you see a topic and it still says topic six, go ahead and edit that really yeah. fast and put your name in it or go to the bottom of the page and do it where somebody else is less likely to be there because yeah. I, I didn't realize I wasn't connecting the dots. Yeah, okay. So in my case, Deborah Borador has made it in. She's topic one. Anthony Burek has made it in. He's topic two. I think we had three other folks in our class, um, and they're probably still working on it at the moment. Okay. But again, um, find a topic. Okay. So again, you can edit the topic. Um, first of all, remember, turn editing on. You have to turn that editing on button. Turn that on or click on the button. Find a topic. Okay. Again, you can edit the topic name, either the pencil to the right or open up the edit um, drop down box on the right hand side and then edit topic. Okay. So we'll give it another maybe minute or so and hopefully folks can um, get set with topics and let us know if you're still having trouble or have questions. We talked about it yesterday, our group, Marjorie and Blair and I, we knew that this was gonna be a bit ambitious. So we appreciate your patience, um, but hopefully once we sort this first part out, then I think we should be good. Because what, what we want you to do is we want everybody to have a space, have a section where they can work in the section. So all, we just need everybody to get into a section. Once you're in the section and we know that it's Anthony's section or Deborah's section or Blair's section, or Elisa section or Teresita section, then we're all good. Then you, once you have a section, then um, we should be good to, good to go from there. Okay. Any remaining questions we need to address, Blair? I think I think we're good. Um, okay. I mean, we have a lot of questions pertaining to the block. I block issue, or, I mean to the participant list issue. So I'm thinking we'll just go ahead and dismiss those. Yes. I don't mean to dismiss you, but dismiss those questions because I think we've addressed it. And if you have to retype another one, please do so. I'm, I, I, yeah. Yeah. And again, you know, if you're still having trouble, just find a topic, um, find a topic towards the bottom of the list. It's more than likely that those are still open and just pick one of those. You just need, you just need a topic space to operate in. That's, that's, um, that's all you need. And I see that um, Lillian now has made a topic space in her in our AB course. Deborah Bird has made a topic space in our in our um, AB course. So it looks like we're we're doing okay in this section. Okay. Okay. So as you're finishing that up, let me just switch back to the slides to tell you what our next activity is going to be. Um, okay. Oh, so maybe we should skip this one. <laughs> because it's the last person on the list. Let's skip the block. It's, this one is not so important. We can circle back to this one or I can show you this one later. Um, let's move on to the resources, okay? Because now, now everybody can do their thing. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do next, okay? So you have your section, you have your topic section. First, we're gonna practice with adding resources to your topic section, okay? What we would like everyone to do is to try to add three unique resources, okay? One of the resources is gonna be a URL. One of the, the second resource is gonna be a page. The third resource is gonna be a file, okay? Um, again, remember the first thing you need to do is turn editing on. You might already have it on, so you're all good. And you're gonna look for this add an activity or resource uh, link or option. To get to the menu where you're going to access the resources. Okay. Before we do that, I want to talk about the text editor for just one minute. Okay. So um, let me go back to the course. Let me show you what we're talking about here. Okay. So I'm in my Anthony Burek topic block, topic section. Sorry, it's a topic section, not a block. I'm in my Anthony Burek topic section. 
Okay, I'm gonna add an activity or resource. Okay, I'm gonna get that activities and resources menu. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom to the resources section. I wanna have all of us add a URL, a page, and a file. Okay, so let me start with the URL. The URL is probably the easiest one. Um, let me, okay, so if I pick URL, I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Okay, now I come to the page, just thinking about it, okay. Now I come to the page where I can add a URL to my topic section, okay. So I'm just gonna do a quick example. Google, www.google.com. Maybe you wanna add your school site um, URL. Maybe you wanna add um, Google or Yahoo or ESPN or CNN or Fox News or whatever. Um, just pick something easy. Don't, don't stress over it, okay? I wanna talk about this though, this text editor box for just a second, okay? So this box here we call the text editor. You can see that when we look at the top of the box, we have some options in terms of what we can do in this text editor box. But I want you to pay particular attention to this icon in the left-hand corner, upper left-hand corner. When you click on it, it actually opens up, um, it toggles between kind of a short view of your, of your icons, option, or sorry, a short view of your options and all of the options, okay? So um, now we can see that we have a lot more options in terms of how we edit the content that's in the text editor box, okay? And some of you know a little bit about HTML. So for example, like if you wanna embed something on a page, you might wanna work on the HTML side rather than the um, text editor side to plop in that HTML right here. Just make sure you update and then um, it'll, it'll, um, it should embed whatever you wanna embed in the text editor. So for example, yesterday we did that at first activity where you um, filled out a Google form that was embedded on a Moodle page. So basically you would grab the embed code. If you, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, don't worry about it, but if you do, you grab the embed code from your, you know, whatever else is out there, you plop it into your HTML editor, and then that now will, should embed that, um, you know, whatever that is, that form or other thing, it sh should embed it on the page, okay? So that's how you would do it. Um, but the text editor, just remember, you toggle between kind of the short view of the options and the long view of the options or all of the options, okay? Um, but in this case, I'm adding a URL. So I, the name of the URL, the, um, the website link or the URL is here. You go ahead and scroll down, make sure you save it. And now in my section, I now have added a URL resource to my section, okay? So again, turn editing on, add an activity or resource, scroll all the way down, and we want you to do three things. Add a URL, add a page, and add a file. And a file, again, would be something like a PDF, a Word doc, a PowerPoint. Try to find something that's small, like maybe just a one-page Word doc or a one-page PDF, and just upload that as your file. Um, I'll leave it at that for the moment. Questions? No questions. Okay. So hopefully folks are starting to practice adding some resources to their section. Let me turn the editing off for a second. If I refresh it. Okay, so, so far, oh, fantastic. Oh, look, 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 okay, fantastic. Lillian, so I'm in the AB course. Lillian has added her URL link to Google. Deborah Bird has added a URL link to her school district. Perfect, fantastic. Okay, so again, I turn editing on, add an activity or resource, scroll all the way down. We wanna add a URL, we wanna add a page, we wanna add a file. Um, let's look at the file for, the sec for, the, for a second, okay? So again, it's a similar looking page to what we just saw for URL. You need to give your page a name, oh, sorry, you need to give your file a name. And then if you have a file, you can just drag it right into your space here. 
Uh, let me see if I, or you could open up a, let me think, I'm trying to think of what I have on my uh, computer at the moment that's small. Um, yeah, I want to find something super short. Uh, and not too. Uh, in Tech Talk handout. Let me look at this. This is a PDF file here. Let me add this one. Um, just name your file also, Tech Talk. And I'm going to upload it. Again, because the internet's kind of slow, it may take a minute or two. Hopefully, one minute rather than two minutes um, to actually upload that file. So I'm going to. Think about what's for lunch coming up. I'm going to think about uh, what's for dinner coming up later. I'm going to think about what I should watch on television tonight to veg out after today. I'm thinking about what all my neighbors are doing out on the street with their constant block parties and wondering if they know what's going on in the world. I'm looking out in my backyard. I'm thinking. Can I oh. ask a question real quick? I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. Excuse me. I may. Bring I don't me, mean to interrupt this, but bring me back from my dream state. Yes. <laughs> we have lots of questions over here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fantastic. So, uh, uh, oh wait, I see somebody resolved their own issue. Awesome, Fantastic. Becky. You rock. Um, please tell us what to do for Paige. And I did you already do the page? It's hard for me to watch what you're doing. I apologize, Anthony. That's did fine. you already tell him what to do about the page? So I'm still waiting for my file to upload. Um, once that does, let me see. Actually, let me let me That's switch okay. over. No, what I can do is let me um, let me let me go to a different browser because I can also be showing from this browser as well. Okay, so um, let me log into and I'll show people what we do when we do a page. Um, Of course, the internet's probably going to be super slow on this one too. Oh, perfect. I'm already logged in. You need to log out. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. Okay. I'm also going to make one quick suggestion. Please, please put all of your questions in the Q&A just mm -hmm. so that we have one spot that we're trying to answer questions. Thank you so much. So let me open up. Let me get to a course. I think my internet is... Wait a second. Why is this not cooperating? Oh. What is it? I do not want to know what's going on here. Um, where is this course? This course is in training. Let me see if I can get to this course. <clears throat> I think I paid the course too. Oh, I'll show you in a different course so I don't mess up what's going on. Um, okay, so turn editing on why this is oh here we go okay turn editing on add an activity or resource scroll down to page go ahead and add that thinking about it okay so um okay so we want to create a, a page for our section okay so again first we have to give this page we have to give the page a name so practice page. And we should point out actually, whenever you see that little red asterisk next to an item, that means it must be, you have to add something there. You can't skip it, okay? I don't have to put a description, that's okay. Okay, I do have to add some content though to this page. So again, if I open up that, if I toggle that um, text editor button, now I have a lot more options in terms of what I can add here. So. Typically on a page, we might just add some content. So here is the content for this page. Um, one thing that I didn't, I'm not sure whether I mentioned it yesterday, but um, over here, um, when you open up your dashboard, and I won't do it now because I'm editing the page, but if you go to your dashboard, one of the things that you have over there is called a private files block. 
And I find that um, Blair and I talked about this yesterday. This is a really handy tool to have in Moodle. It's almost like your own kind of private library where you can upload files and pictures and other kinds of things into your private files block. And then you can pull that content from private files into the various parts of your Moodle course. So I'll show you an example of what I mean. So I wanna add a picture to my page and I have a bunch of pictures in my private files. So if I click on the picture icon here, the image um, icon, and I browse repository. So I could pull something from my own personal computer, but if I go to private files over here, this is thinking about it. These are all the files that I have uploaded to the private file space. And again, it's kind of like my personal library. So I have my, I have my pictures organized by, um, um, by folders. So if I open up, uh, let me think here, let me open up this folder. And I have a bunch of pictures here. So I really want this picture on my page. So I go ahead and click on it. And I go ahead and select it. I do have to add some alt text here. Um, so this is a picture, oops, picture of the resources uh, section menu section, I think, menu section, okay. Um, and then I go ahead and, uh, I'm gonna resize it just a little bit, um, 550, and it should auto resize. Yeah, it'll auto size. So then I can go ahead and save it. And now here's the picture that I've automatically added to the page. Again, I pulled it from my private files block, um, which you can access from the dashboard. Um, okay, so I like the content. I'm ready to go here. Um, let's not, we won't worry too much about these other things. You can kind of explore these on your own, but I go ahead and save it. And it's taking its sweet time. Anthony, we, we have quite a few people saying they're getting database errors. So I just thought I'd let you know while you're um, waiting for your file to upload. Okay. So I'm thinking if you're having the database error, maybe just kind of take a deep breath, watch Anthony for a oh, few minutes. Go. Yeah. And, um, you know, it just may be that that's something you'll practice later. The other thing is I had a question about, will the courses be here after the workshop? They can continue to work in them until they get their own courses. Yes. Okay. They will be. Perfect. Yeah. That's what I'm telling them. So, oops. Okay. I hope that's okay. that's okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're having some trouble. This is with the file, um, activity, I think, so if the file activity is not working, that's okay for the moment. Um, if we, so actually FY, oh, I need to give it a, a name at least. So if you're not able to find a file, then skip the part, but basically this select file space is the space where you would add the file. You could either drag it into this or you can um, find, you know, you can um, find it from your computer or wherever it is. But so long as we have a title, we should be able to save this page even without a file. Oh, no, I guess we need a file. Okay, so this is what people are having trouble with. Okay, so if the file is, if that's not working, then that's okay, just go ahead and cancel it. But basically that's how you would do it, okay? Um, okay, back to the page for a second. Okay, so here's my practice page. Okay, so again, if I, if I take a second look at it, so um, we're adding a title um, for the practice page, okay? And then when we come down to the content, we can type in some content, we could add a picture, um, we, could have, we could also um, maybe add um, links to other websites, for example. Um, we probably could embed a video as well. Okay, and then once you have a little bit of content in there, go ahead and save it. And then that practice page or whatever page you've named it will, should show up in your section. Okay, so let me go back to, um, let me see what's going on on this page so far. Okay, refresh this. 
Okay, so we still have the links, but um, let's try everybody to have at least a URL and a page since we were having trouble with the file. So again, I'm going to click on page. I'm going to add a re activity or resource. I'm going to click on page to add a page. I'm going to give my page a name. Oops, this is my practice page. Let me just add a quick description just to show you what that looks like. If I click on this box to add the description to the course page, then we'll see what that, you know, where that shows up. Um, here is some practice content. Again, um, just talking about that private file. Oh, well, actually, let me, in the other side, let me just show you what that looks like. Um, the way you access private files is you open up the, um, the drop down in the upper right hand corner and you click on your dashboard. And again, I apologize for the slow internet. Um, if you scroll down a bit, on the right hand side, there's this private files block here. Okay, so, and let me open that up and show you what that looks like. So again, this is a block here, private files block. Again, this would be a place where you could upload a number of things that you would want to bring into your Moodle course. And especially if you're thinking about like using particular files or pictures or graphics um, in a few places in your course. So rather than having to do, you know, upload it every single time, you know, for where you want it to be, if it's stored in your private file space, then you can just pull it directly from here, okay? Um, in the private file space, you can create folders. Um, if, you wanna, if you have a bunch of things in there and you wanna organize it. Otherwise, um, you could just drag things into this private files box, or you can add them from your computer, or maybe things from your Google Drive, for example. Um, you should be able to bring those things into your private file space. But again, really, you know, think about making use of this private spot, private file space um, as a kind of storage repository so that um, as you're then going to bring those resources into your course, you'll have them all organized in one place. You know, and it, you know, consider, for example, like creating a folder for each of your topics, right? So topic one files, topic two files, topic three files, topic four files, so on, so on. Or week one files, week two files, week three files, and so on, so on. So, you know, you can have things ready to go in the private file space, and then they're all there in one place for you, okay? Rather than having to keep searching around on your computer or wherever, okay? So again, back to the page, we add a title, we add a description, we wanna show the description, we add a little bit of content, um, and then we're good to go. We're gonna go ahead and save it. I'm thinking about it. Okay, now I have, in my place I have, this is my practice page. I added the description. So if you make the description visible, let me just turn the editing off for a second here, then this is where the description is gonna show up, down here, okay? So I see Deborah's added a test page, fantastic, okay? Lillian and Deborah maybe are still working on it, okay? But again, this is where we're gonna um, add some of those resources, okay? Blair, other questions? Um, People are still I, working, still practicing? Well, there's, there are some questions about um, what is the difference between a page and a, um, a file. So Anthony, one of the things, I don't know if you, and you may have told, told on this, that if you click on add an activity or resource, mm -hmm. a really good Moodle resource is they can see what the different descriptions, yeah. um, <laughs> if you can get there, right? Yeah, so if go. you click on that, and, and this is really valuable information. So now if Anthony clicked on page, and if you look, just read all that information right there, and it'll explain it to you. In short, a page is like a Word document versus a file, which links out to a file that you've uploaded into Moodle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The thing about the file as well um, is, so if we go back to, so remember these icons that appear, right? So for example, we have this, um, 
This is a URL, so this, it's, a piece, it's a globe in front of a piece of paper. For the practice page, it kind of just looks like a piece of paper. But if I'm looking at, let me go back to that other course for a second. Um, the BBS course. Okay, so the thing about the file is when we add a file, we can actually also show the file icon as well. So now we know, oh, well, from the teacher point of view, we know that we've uploaded a file into the section or into the course. And we can also see in this case, there, um, actually Moodle has this corresponding PowerPoint icon that, that matches the PowerPoint file that we've added to the section. We added a PDF, so Moodle has a PDF icon that corresponds with the PDF file that we've uploaded to the section, okay? So sometimes, um, yeah, I think really if you have a file, you really should use the file resource. Um, I know that today we're running into some internet trouble, I think, but, um, um, but really, I, you know, when it comes to a files, we really should use the file resource option and we should use the page to really build like a web page where we, wanna, might, we might wanna add some pictures there, we might wanna add some links there, you know, whatever, however we wanna organize the page, so. Anthony? Yes? So we're getting a question about um, when you create a page, if you click on page yes. and then you, you do like your, let's see in the page content, I clicked on manage file icon mm -hmm. at the end of the icon list then drag the file into the box but can't see where to find it. Um, oh, sorry, we're on the, we're creating a file. Well, no, it says from the page, the page section, when you click on manage files and drag the file into the box. So this may be a question. I, I'm not sure I understand the question, um, but she just got timed out, so maybe that's what the problem was. Never mind. Okay. In the, in the um, if we're adding a page, I don't think it gives us the option to drag something into this box, into the text editor box. So I'm wondering if actually maybe she's on the file page or the page page? Because right we're, here we have a text editor, which we should, I don't think we should be able to drag files into here, but if we were working on the file page, then we can drag the file into that space. So I'm not, I'm not, not sure, sure yeah, she got she's timed actually out. on the page, yeah. And I think probably because she's on the file page. So. Okay. So as people are working, um, let me just point out a few other things as well. Um, I was going to have you do it, but I think I'll just show you instead. And my internet is still thinking about it. Okay, so again, when we have the editing turned on, a couple of other things that we can do here, okay? So let's say, for example, in my section, right now I have two items. I have my URL link and I have my page, right? And I'm like, oh, you know what? I really want my page to be first. So remember that we have this um, cross icon off on the left-hand side. So if we scroll over it and we click on it and hold, then we can drag it up and reorder the items in our section, okay? So now my practice page is first and my Google link is second. Okay, that's the order that I want it. I didn't create it that way, but I can use the move to move things around in a section, okay? Let's say also that um, I wanna move this over a little bit because I want the page to be kind of more prominent and I want the Google to be kind of like indented. So remember that I can, if I click on the edit drop down, and I have some options down here, I can go ahead and move things right, for example, and this will give it some indentation. Okay, so if you want to have your section look a certain way, um, you can also do that indenting as well. Okay, I can also, um, let's say I want to add another link to my page. Um, you could create another link, you could add a URL, you could also duplicate. So let's see what that looks like. So if I duplicate this, I should now get a second URL, which will be the same. 
still thinking about it. Yeah, the internet, I think, is super slow. La, 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 la. Maybe if I turn away, a watch pot never boils. So now I'm stuck. It might time me out. Anyway, um, let's see if I can do it in the other one. Hey, I um, turn the other thing on here. OK, so um, I have this link. Let's see if I can create a duplicate link from here. Or is it still going to think about it? Yeah, it's still going to think about it. So, oh, good. OK, so it worked over here. OK, so now what I've done is I duplicated this um, link. OK, actually, I want to move it over, move it backward. OK, so what I can do now is I could also now go ahead and edit this. So if I edit the settings, um, let's say I change this one to Yahoo. I believe it's still yahoo.com. Okay. Um, and then go ahead and save it. Okay. So, oh, okay. So I can also use that duplicate down here in the edit drop down. If I, you know, if I want to quickly duplicate, um, I've already created like a URL or something else. Um, I can also use the duplicate to, and then edit, you know, the duplicate item that I've added. So that's what that is. Okay. And then again, let's say, oh, you know what, really, I want Yahoo to be the first link instead of Google. So I can reorder using the move. Okay. Let's say for the moment too, um, I have some items in here, but I don't want to show them all. So remember, if we want to hide something, if we want to hide an individual item, then we go to the edit menu drop down for that individual item and we can hide it. Okay. So if I now switch my view to um, a student view. Okay. So now in my section, I only see the page and I see that link to Yahoo because the Google link is hidden. So this is what my students are going to see. Okay. So again, that's a quick way to if you're doing some work and you just want to kind of see what the student view is going to be, do that switch role too, okay? I'm going to go back, all right? So if I want to hide individual, I'm going to turn my editing on. If I want to hide individual items, thinking about it. If I want to hide individual items, then again, item, um, edit drop down and then go between show and hide, okay? If you want to hide the entire section, Okay, or sorry, the entire topic, or well, topic section, we can hide the topic. This will hide all of the items, the entire section, okay? Again, if I switch view, okay, so right now it's Deborah B, it's Anthony, it's topic three, it's Lillian, okay? If I switch to the topic view, uh, the student view, or student role, okay? So now this is not available. Students will not be able to see the things that you have hidden, okay? They only see Deborah, topic three, Lillian, okay? So again, remember the hide and show functions, either for entire sections or for individual items within a section, okay? Okay, questions about that? I want to show the topic. Okay, so if there aren't questions, um, let's make a switch over then to um, the activities and uh, portion of this, okay? So, so far we've been practicing with resources. Um, in the interest of time, and I'm sorry that, yeah, we're kind of, I knew this was gonna take a long time and this is why we always do a three hour training instead of two, but um, no matter. Let's pick the choice activity. I think this will be the easiest one to do, okay? So, again, what we're gonna do is you're gonna make sure the editing's on, turn editing on, okay? Add an activity or resource, make sure I'm in my section, add an activity or resource, okay? And we're gonna do the choice activity. 
And you might remember from yesterday that the choice activity is kind of like a survey or a questionnaire type thing. It's a very simple way to set up a kind of a survey, a survey kind of a survey like activity um, that your students can do for you to get some feedback or to ask questions or you know find out choices, things like that. So let's practice adding the choice activity. Okay, so we pick choice, we add it. We're going to come to the choice page. Okay. So again, we have to give the choice a name. So what's, uh, we'll do food, right? That's a easy one, right? What's your favorite food? What's your favorite, I can spell correctly. What's your favorite food, okay? We can add a description if you would like. Tell me what your favorite cuisine is, okay? We can add the description if we would like, okay. So for this, each activity, and actually each resource as well, is going to give you some different um, options in terms of how you set up the activity or how you, um, well, set up the activity and also sort of create the look of the activity, okay? So I have two choices in terms of how the options will look. They will either appear in a row horizontally or they will appear as a list vertically. So I'm going to pick vertically in this case, okay? Um, if I, let's second, allow more than one choice to be selected, okay? Um, if you know the difference between radio buttons and check boxes, this is basically the option here, okay? In this case, I only want people to pick one choice, but if I wanted them to select more than one choice, maybe two or three or four or five choices, then I would change this to yes, okay? But I'm gonna keep it at no. Okay, then I'm going to put in some different options, some different choices, right? Maybe French food, Italian food, uh, Chinese food, uh, Thai food. You can tell I'm getting ready for lunch. Um, I'm drawing a blank. Indian food, whatever you want to do, okay? You can add more fields if you would like or you don't have to use all five, you have to have at least one, okay? Because there's a red um, asterisk next to it. But <clears throat> if you only wanted like four, then you could just have four, okay? If you want more than five, you can have more than five, okay? And I maybe shouldn't have clicked on that button, but let's see, okay? But I'm, I'm putting in my choices here. Okay, it's updating it, okay? So now I can add more, um, options if I would like. Just make sure everything else is the way I wanted it. Okay, so then, <clears throat> um, again, I'm not going to spend too much time on these, but you can, you know, you should definitely take a look at those. Go ahead and save it. Okay, and now I've added, you can see now I have this choice activity um, as a part of my section. Okay, maybe I want students to do this first. Maybe we're doing like a warm-up type of, or like an icebreaker type thing. So I move it to the top of my section, okay? Um, let me switch to the student role, because I think this will make the most sense um, as a student looking at the choice. Okay, so if I click on the choice activity, okay, so again, here's the title of my choice activity. I've added a description here. Here are my five choices, French, Italian, Chinese, Thai, Indian. I only want people to pick one, so that's why you see the radio buttons. But again, if I allowed people to make, to, if I la allowed my students to pick more than one choice, then I would get the check boxes instead, and then they could pick two or more check boxes. So let's say I pick Indian, save my choice, and I believe the settings are such that, oh, the results are not uh, viewable, okay. So this way, really then I would be the only person as the teacher to see um, what my students selected. You can change the viewing options to allow all of the students to see all of the answers. So you have a lot of flexibility with activities in terms of um, whether they're viewable, not viewable, um, we talked yesterday a little bit about the discussion forums. So you have some different choices with the discussion forums. One of the options I believe was 
you're not allowed to see other people's responses until you put in your response first. So again, when you're, um, when you're considering the activities and the resources that you want to add as a part of your course, you want to kind of have a good sense of um, the drop downs that we didn't look at, at towards the bottom. But that will, those drop downs will give you many more options in terms of how you structure your activities and resources. Um, your choice has been saved. Okay, so I can go back to the course. Okay. And I don't think I allowed a person to make another choice. Yeah, so I only allowed my students to make one choice. I selected Indian and that's it. I only get one, one time to do it. Okay, but you could give your students more times to do it if they would like, so. Okay, so again, oops, make it, turn the editing on. So if you want to practice the choice, add an activity or resource, select choice from near the top, go ahead and add it, and then you can set up your choice activity. Okay, questions? Oh, fantastic, Deborah has added a choice activity. Let me, um, let me see if I can do Deborah Bird's choice activity. Okay, so Deborah, it looks like what Deborah has done here is she's actually set up her choices horizontally. So since they don't all fit on one line, they're gonna run over into a second line, okay? Um, what sounds delicious right now? All of them sound delicious. Savory sounds particularly delicious. Oh, the choice is full. Okay, so probably Deborah has a setting right now. Um, maybe the choice activity is full and uh, maybe she's only allowed for like five students to answer or whatever. So you wanna, again, just review the settings on your choice activity. Okay, Blair, any sense of <laughs> questions out there? I'm sure that people have questions for sure. You know, it's been pretty quiet. Okay. <laughs> kind of scarily quiet. Silence, silence is golden. I don't know. What, uh, I'm not sure what exactly is happening. Well, there. we still have people in the room, so. Uh... Okay. I'm sure, apologize, folks. Um, if you are feeling frustrated at this point, um, I'm sure that there's probably some frustration out there, and I, I totally get it. Um, we're all facing um, varying conditions of connectivity and our sense of you know our own computer skills and all that kind of stuff so um, hopefully though I've given you enough of a sense of how to go about it even if you're having trouble in the moment um, and we said that these practice courses are going to be open so please feel free to come back um, you're all teachers in all these courses so feel free to come back and just experiment and play around with it anything that we talked about today or and yesterday as well um, you know, feel free to come back into the practice courses when you, you know, have calmed down, maybe have a little bit of food or drink in you, um, and, you know, you feel kind of mentally ready to give it another go. Um, again, Anthony, the practice, yes. I'm, yes. I'm going to jump in here as the, sure. as the tech. Um, sure. What you have been experiencing today, and even Anthony has been experiencing today, is very abnormal. You're all in the same course. You're all doing it at the same time. You've all got special rights as teachers and what have you. And that's loading up the system. And we're actually watching that behind the scenes. So that we've even gotten this far is, is kudos to Moodle for doing this. So as Anthony's just told you, you know, take a little break, come back. It won't be as slow when you're all doing it on your own at different times. You might notice a little glitch here and again, but you won't see the massive <laughs> slowdowns that you've experienced right now. So um, I'm just putting that out there to, again, patience is a good thing, but we've kind of overloaded the, the system right now. So, and you won't experience that or you shouldn't when you're doing it with your class or when you're doing your courses here. So just thought to get that in there real quick. Yes. So actually on that note, why don't we, um, why don't we all just stop for a minute? Because I, um, I do want to honor people's time. We are getting close to the 12 o'clock hour. Um, I do want to, um, let's come back to the, let's come back to the Zoom room for a second, the presentation um, that I have up here. 
Um, oh, somebody, I did notice, um, I know that um, my friend Sandy Davenport did ask about, um, about the PowerPoints. And I'm thinking what I might do is, um, we talked about, and I'll remind you about the, um, the self-paced course um, that I mentioned yesterday. What I'm thinking about doing is maybe I will put both of the slide decks in the training course, and then that way you can, th they will be there if you wanna go back and look at yesterday and today's slides. So let me do that as kind of a workaround. We also will get them up um, on the OTAN website um, as quickly as we can, but for the time being, maybe um, I will also put them in the practice, in the self-paced course again. Um, and you can come back to the self-paced course and look at it that way. Okay, let me, um, let's see where we are here. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, so I do wanna talk, maybe um, we don't have too much time. Um, let me, yeah, these are kind of big topics. Um, enrollment and the grade book. So let me do, Let's, let me go back to the course for a second. And then Blair, I'm gonna have you, um, why don't you get your practice course queued up? Um, you know, Anthony, I'm thinking based on all the issues that we're having, why don't you just go into my practice course and okay. we can just show them, do a really quick, this is where it is, this is kind of what it looks like. It may be a little clunkier, but I'm just a little anxious about switching over. Okay. I don't know if that's good or bad. Melinda, okay. anybody? I think that's let a me, good solution, yes. Okay, so let me, let's talk about enrollment for a second, okay? So um, if you don't do, if we get, if you have a course, okay, if you have a, if you have a Moodle course in your account and you don't do anything to it, basically um, your students will be able, to, so long as they have an account at adultedcourses.org, they will be able to enroll in your course straight away, right? They will come to that enrollment page that you saw when you joined um, your practice course this morning. And at the very bottom, they'll have that self-enroll button. And again, if you don't do anything to your course, students who come to the, your, um, students who find your course will be able to self-enroll in the course and then they will be enrolled as students in your course, okay? but you do have some control over the enrollment of students in your course. So the way that you get there is if you're in a course, you wanna, um, you wanna scroll down to the administration menu, uh, sorry, administration block, and you wanna look for this users option here, okay? Open up the users. Now I mentioned um, early on that another way to see who is actually enrolled in your course currently is by clicking on enrolled users. So let's look at that list for a second, okay? This gives you another view of the folks who are enrolled in your course. And what's very handy for you as the teacher is to actually see the roles, okay? So typically it would be, so for example, if this was my course, I would be the teacher in the course and then everyone else, oops, everyone, stop. Uh-oh, I think it's a list. Everyone else would be a student and it would show, it would show up Teresita would be a student, Deborah would be a student, Deborah would be a student, Lillian would be a student, and then I would be the teacher, okay? So from here, you can see the roles of the folks who are enrolled in your course, okay? But if you, again, under users, if you click on enrollment methods, it's gonna bring you to this page here. Now, you, you have two options, basically, in terms of how to get students into your course. You can either enroll them yourself, manually, meaning once you know that students have your, have accounts at Moodle dot, uh, sorry, at adultedcourses.org, you can find them and manually enroll them in your course. So you do have that option, but um, in terms of the self-enrollment option, if we click on the gear to edit self-enrollment, we can put some restrictions on the self-enrollment. So for example, a lot of folks set up what they call an enrollment key, which is basically a password to your course. So you might remember yesterday when you took the quiz, we did something similar. We set up a password for the quiz. So it's the same idea. You can set up a password. In this case, it's called enrollment key. So 
when people, when the students come to your course, they need that password. So you can be giving your password only to your students and that way that, that should ensure that nobody else comes into your course. That's probably the best way to do it, okay? Um, when you create the enrollment key, just make sure that you save, okay? Um, one other thing we wanna point out is this option down here to create a custom welcome message. So you can type any kind of message that you would like into the, this is basically a, a, a text box, text editor box. So you can type in, um, you can type in any message that you would like, okay? So when students are enrolling or when they enroll in your course, then as a confirmation, they will get whatever mel uh, welcome message you've set up here, okay? So we, we, consider, we um, encourage you to consider adding a welcome message so that your students will know, oh yes, this is from my teacher, Anthony, and I know that I'm in the right course and blah, 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 okay? So again, consider adding a password or enrollment key and then also consider adding a welcome message as well. Again, access from users, enrollment methods, okay? I'm gonna leave it at that on the um, enrollment. So um, in terms of the grades, yeah, let me switch over to that other course. Um, so it is, what is it? Oh, practice if this one here. I'm gonna leave the page, yes. Okay. Yes, that's it. Okay, Blair, do you wanna um, tell us what we're looking at here? Right, so, uh, oh, how are you logged in? You're logged in as a student. Oh, let me change, let me, I'll just log in as a, okay, uh, so my admin I'll, account. Okay, and I'll talk, I'll talk. Um, <clears throat> so all, all activities and resources can be added into your gradebook um, if they're not well, they should be done automatically mostly, but anyway. Okay, so in your gradebook, as you're creating activities and resources, do you have an option of how you wanna add that into your gradebook? The gradebook is extremely powerful. Um, you can organize it any way you want. You can have um, extra credit options. I, once we get into the gradebook, it'll help the visual. I need a visual here. Okay, so here's your grader report. So you can see that we have three students in this course. One of the things that I, uh, well, he has a different grader preference. So grader preferences is a great thing to look at. Um, and we're not going to, don't click on everything right now, Anthony, let's just look at it. So if I were in my grade book as as a teacher in the course what you would see is you could see that Anthony Marjorie and Blair have uh, their final grades um, or their current grades are in this first list that's a greater preference that you can explore the other thing is you can see that last night I was going to manually grade one of Anthony's um, test grade so the basic computer terms and the reason that's yellow is because as a teacher I went in I clicked on that and it gave me the option to override any grades so you have total control over whether the grades are generated by the activity or the grades generated by the teacher you can do placeholder for grades so if you want to do extra credit you can add um, an extra credit option you give it a points amount and then as a teacher you're going to go in and then you, as the students complete the extra credit, you can add that in. Moodle does all the math. It gives you an option to change the formulas. You can get really, dive really down into this. So you can see as Anthony scrolls over, he's going to see all of the different grades that have been generated. If he were to click on, he's not going to, but if you were to click on one of these links, it would take you straight to that activity and you'd be able to go into the activity and <clears throat> uh, it's just a quick way to get into the activity. But let's say he knows that Blair really did a 65 on the interview with a musician. So he's gonna click on one of these. So click on it and he can actually override that grade. So about what Moodle does, Moodle it will let you um, with the quizzes and um, a lot of the different or some of the activities you can have Moodle generate the grades but as a teacher you have 
total control over whether you want to override those. And then it'll recalculate everything. So if you scroll all the way over to the end, if you're motion sickness, don't look. You have issues. Go, I'll keep going, Anthony, all the way to the end of the column, please. Keep going. All the way, there you go. So here's the course total. And that'll give you um, for each of the students. So now I'm going to have you go back to the other side. I can't, yeah, okay, there you're going. So if we look here, the other thing I want to show you just real quickly, Anthony's going to click on setup. Up at the top, go above participant, okay. Perfect, thank you, Anthony, sorry. <laughs> so now you can see how this particular gradebook has been set up, and the nice thing about this, this came out of the advanced DSL course, so if you get that course, your gradebook is set up, it's organized, it's ready to go, but you can see you have um, the practice advanced DSL, that's a, a category and a label that uh, Francisca created to help organize that. Um, you go down just a little bit further. Well, let's go across. We have the max grade, so we have the list of what all the different grade items are, the totals. Uh, you can edit any of these things. If we go down the middle section where we have, um, where it says goals, you'll see that you have the category goals and you have the one goals total that gives you how many points for this whole category. Um, and all of this is created, Moodle creates the basics, but the teacher has control over organizing it and setting up the points amount. So it's extremely powerful. Um, you could spend, we could spend a lot of time working on the, the grade book, but all of your quizzes, you can see that in here we have lessons are graded. We've got um, writing sentences with word forms. That's a quiz that's been graded. You have hot potatoes, which I don't know too many people are using that anymore, but that can be inserted into Moodle. That's graded and Moodle does all the heavy lifting. And as a teacher, you just come back in and organize. So if you go down to the bottom, and I should say organize and change it to what works for you. If you look at the very bottom, there we go. So now you can see that the options that you have as a teacher, you can add a category, you can add a grade item. Um, outcomes is a little bit more advanced even than the grade book. So if I want, maybe each week I give extra credit to my students, I can add a grade item, I can put it in each week. Um, in my organized grade book and then assign points to it and then as a teacher I manually come in and add those and then Moodle does all of the math for you. So that's a real quick synopsis um, of the grade book, how it works, and there you have it. Any questions? <laughs> and if you do, um, again, if you do have questions, um, you know, you can always email us support at OTAN.us and if we need to um, jump on a Zoom with you, we can, you know, go into the gradebook a little bit more in depth. But um, I think the main thing that Blair and I wanted to share with folks, again, is that if you do get a copy of a developed course, shared course, civics course, in most cases there will be a gradebook already set up for those courses. So then it's just a matter of, um, you know, monitoring the gradebook, um, you know, if you need to pull grades from there for whatever reason, um, that's where you're going to find that information. Okay. Um, I think we're at the 12 o'clock hour and I super want to honor folks time. Um, I do want to point out before we leave here though, a couple, um, I don't even know where I am. Hold on a sec. Training courses. Okay. Um, um, if you weren't with us yesterday um, or you didn't get to it yesterday, just remember that, again, back in the training courses section, so we're going to keep all the practice courses here. I don't know about this Team TZ. I'm, I'm not, I, I know a few folks in that Team TZ, and they sound very presumptuous, but we'll leave it at that. Um, the self-paced Moodle training course, okay? This is also available as well. Um, any one of you can go back in and um, enroll yourself in the self-paced Moodle training course. So um, a lot of what we talked about yesterday is in the course. Um, it's kind of a thing that we're building currently at the moment as well. So in the coming weeks, 
week and weeks. Um, there, I'm trying to get some more um, information into you know about Moodle and things that you can draw on. Um, you know, maybe some practice exercises, more videos, things like that. Um, I did mention that I'll go ahead and upload the uh, PowerPoints from yesterday and today into this self-paced Moodle training course. So please um, enroll yourself in that course. And then if you want to take a look at the slides, they should be there. Um, if I don't get to it today, definitely by the end of this week. Okay. We're also going to put them back up on the OTAN website as well. Um, let me finish my, I just have a couple of slides here, I think. Oh, okay. So again, um, if you want more information, we would also encourage you to visit the, sorry, to visit the Moodle Docs site. It's docs.moodle.org. There's a lot of documentation on the site, um, a lot more information about um, so many things about Moodle. If you're, you know, fuller descriptions of the gradebook, enrollment methods, any of the things that we've talked about and practiced today as well will be there. Um, just so folks are aware, Moodle is currently at version 3.8. Our adult ed courses site is at, a, um, at version 3.1. We're in the process of upgrading to 3.8. Hopefully in the next couple of months, that process will be complete, but we certainly will keep you updated on how that upgrade is going. 